So this was at – you had a 40-day leave? Yeah, I had a 45-day leave before I had to report to my next duty station, which was Fort Lewis, Washington. But after that hunting trip, you know, after having the nightmares and stuff like that, and then I just said, well, I can't stay home. I can't be here, you know, because people are just, I mean, I'm scaring everybody. And so I said, well, I got to go, you know, and told my Aunt Mary, I said, I got to report in the next duty station, which I didn't have to do for another, well, 11 days or something like that. 21 days or I do with something like that, I can't remember for sure. So I left and I went down to the duty station and I was in North Fort Lewis and they couldn't find me on the roster. And so they asked me, well, when are you supposed to report in? And I told them when I was supposed to report in. So that's why I'm not on the roster. Said, you're here early, how come you're here early? And I said, well, I came back from Vietnam, I couldn't stay at home, so I'm here reporting for duty. I don't know what else to do. I said, well, what are we going to do with you? And I started laughing, and I said, well, I don't know, whatever. I said, okay, well, you can go and go in the bars, get your bunk, you know, and we'll figure out something to do with you. So I went to Chow. Just got myself squared away, went to chow and went in and saw the first sergeant and explained the situation to him. He said, well, here's what we're going to do. We don't have any place to put you. And you're not on the roster. So we, we're going to let you come and go. You can be off base as much as you want or anything, but, you know, um, you got to be here for formation in the morning and reveille at night. Okay, that's good enough. So I go be there. Formation in the morning, reveille at night, and between that time, you know, it's a whole day done. So I took off and went into town, looked around Tacoma and see what was there. Spent all my day away from the base and I go back. Well, I got tired of doing that about three days. I was ready to go do something else. I went back for a son and told me, hey, you got to put me to work. Otherwise, I don't want to get in trouble. I got too much sweet time. I'm not used to it. So they said, well, we really need somebody to help us down in the motor pool. We'll put you in there. They put me in the motor pool and I went to work every day over with some guy named Lewis. And uh, he would uh, he was working on vehicles. They have maintenance every so often. He's going to pull a vehicle out and do maintenance on it, annual maintenance or whatever it is, monthly maintenance. So I did that for a while, and then uh, I got orders to cut me orders to go to uh, the main. The main base in Fort Lewis. So I was in North Fort Lewis and so I was going to go to the main base and went there and put me work in the motor pool there and I stayed there. I had 18 months to go yet. So I had a year and a half to go. So, you know, they tried to, when my time came to uh, be discharged, they asked me if I was going to re enlist. Oh, no. But before that happened, he came to me and said, I want to send you to Germany. Germany? Yeah, I said, but you have to re-enlist because it's a three-year tour. Really? And, um, for, come before it comes in, he goes, you can't do that. What do you mean I can't? He just came back from overseas. He was in Vietnam. He said, you can't send him over for a year. I wait a year before he sent him back overseas. So in order for him to go to uh, Germany, he has to re-enlist for three years. So look at me. You want to re-enlist for three years and go to Germany? I said, no. <laughs> discharge me. I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> discharge me. Mm -hmm. 
or out in the comfy area, and the spec four comes by. We're all standing around smoking cigarettes and early. He's looking at the ground. He says, "I want you guys, you police the grounds." In other words, you tell us we're out grow and pick up cigarette butts. We're all standing there looking at him. He says, "No way, we're not doing that." But we're getting just started out of this place shortly. If you want them, you want them to GI the ground, go get a private. Look at that. Oh, okay. Just about then they called formation, gave us our discharge papers and everything, and all our paperwork and everything, and got on buses and went to town. <laughs> now we know. Um, was my dad right across the street from you? Oh, man, that was, I couldn't believe it. I come in from, I was in a motor pool, and I came in, and they said, uh, <clears throat> guy on duty, he goes, uh, hey, Bennett, there's somebody upstairs looking for you. Really? I said, yeah. He said, uh, you know, he's going to wait for you upstairs in, the, in your, you know, in your bay, squad bay. No, so I'm running upstairs. I couldn't figure out who the hell would be, you know, who the hell knows I'm here. I kept thinking to myself. Ran up there and there's this guy laying on my bed. Oh, for Christ's sake. Went over there and hit the bed. Bam! Who went up? My brother jumped up just about then. I go, <laughs> What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> Laughing like right hell. I've been looking for you for three days. <laughs> what? I said, yeah, I've been here for three days looking for you. He went down the post locator. Nobody knows you. I said I was in North Port. I was in um, North Port Lewis when I first came here. I haven't been here that long. I'm just in the barracks. He said, so what are you doing here? And he said, oh, I'm AWOL. Oh, no, huh? I told him, no, George, if you were AWOL, you would be in the stockade right now. <laughs> and he said, where? I said, where are you staying? And they started laughing, turned around and pointed right there. And they said, a wooden barracks across from us. He said, I've been there for three days looking for you, right straight across the street from you. <laughs> Really? I said, I went to post locator. I've been everywhere I could think of to try to find you, and nobody knew where you were. <laughs> and I just had to walk in the building and ask the guy at the desk if they knew you, and they knew you, and said that you were, you, had, you know, up in the squad, be up on the third floor. <laughs> <laughs> I was so surprised to see him. I couldn't believe it. I know. But he knew I just came back from Vietnam. And I didn't say anything. I said, where are you going? Um, going to Vietnam. And I just turned cold. All oh, inside of me just went cold. I said, where are you going? I said, supposed to ship out tomorrow. Oh, okay. And he said, ask me, hey. You know where Jacob St. Clair lives? Down in Seattle? And they, say, they say that there's a YMCA in Seattle, and that's where Jacob's at. So let's go to Seattle. I said, let's go. And I had a 1958 yellow Chevy wow. four door. And we took off and went to Seattle and got hold of Jacob. <laughs> Party with Jacob, and I don't remember leaving Seattle. When I came to again, I was sitting in the parking lot in uh, Fort Lewis in front of my barracks, half hour before Reveille. Wait. And my brother is, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at him. And Who drove? He says, You did. I said, Boko. I said, Well, we got in the wheel, did me? I said, We came through the gate and everything, the guard station and everything, and then saw it. No. Asked you where you're going, you told him, and you just drove right on, parked the car. You know, tell the guy, I said, well, he probably says, hey, the revelry's coming on, we gotta go, you know. 
I got to go. I'll see you. And I, was, I didn't see him again until I came home. Because <clears throat> I think maybe like a week later, a couple weeks later, I got a letter from him. He told me he was in Vietnam. Oh, wow. So he was the only one that I saw all of that whole tour, that whole time. I didn't know about the other guys that went there from here. Mm. From Huna. I didn't find out about that till way late. Way later. Years later. You know. I didn't know all that many of us went. I was just surprised when they were telling me. Wow. But every one of them went after I did. You know, one of the pictures in this book there says October 1968. I was home in October 1966. Wow. Two years before. Couldn't believe it. My brother. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. We never, I never told him. He never asked about Vietnam when we were together that last day. Was that intentional? He didn't want to ask? No, I just didn't want to. You know, I mean, what could I tell him? You know, there's nothing I could tell him. Because I didn't know where he was going to go. I didn't know where he was going to station. Matter of fact, I didn't even know what his MOS was, and I didn't ask him. I didn't know that he was in the infantry. And then he got drafted, so a lot of those draftees were infantry. Lots of them. You, you you said you got a cold feeling, and, and that's just the you knew, huh? The... Yeah, it's just weird, you know, that I would go over there, and then, then not even very long afterwards, and then he was going over there. You know, and just had that weird feeling about it. It was like probably a year after I got back, he went over. I don't know where I was when he came home. I don't remember. Huh. That's probably a good place to stop there, huh? Yeah.